In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily match skin tones across your subject using the Selective Color Adjustment layer in Photoshop. Hey there, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Vibrant Shot and also at VibrantShot.com. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing you an alternative approach to all the other options out there for matching skin tones. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can use hue saturation, you can use curves, you can use my SACA action that I demonstrated in a previous video. Or you can use the Selective Color Adjustment layer, which I actually haven't seen too many people demonstrate for the purpose of matching skin tones. And so as our example, I'm going to be using this image here that I shot while filming my photography and retouching course at RGGEDU. Uh, I'd really appreciate you clicking on the link that you see down here below and checking that course out. Um, ultimately, that is what allows me to continue bringing you more of these free videos. So in this image here, uh, if we take this layer off here, we can tell that the face, you know, has a nice orangey kind of warmth to it. And then the legs down here uh, don't quite match. So if we kind of toggle this selective color adjustment on and off, you can see that everything is matching together a lot better. So how the heck do we actually um, use selective color to match those things up? Well, what we're going to do is uh, let's just zoom in a little bit here. And uh, if we look at the face here. We're going to actually make sure to have the info panel open. So if you don't have the info panel showing here, just go to window and then make sure that info is um, checked off. You can also hit F8 and that will toggle it. So um, if we hover over the forehead here, which we're going to use as a reference point, uh, forehead is always a good place to use as a reference because if you kind of reference from um, cheekbone area, there might be some blush in there and it's just going to kind of distort the overall color. So forehead is usually a pretty good place to sample from. In this case, we could also use the neck if we wanted to. So if we kind of just hover over here and we start looking at the values, so look in this section where it says CMYK, and we start looking at these values, we can see that we are, um, for the most part, you know, magenta is twice the amount of cyan. We have like 23 and then 46, um, 23, 47, and then the yellow value is roughly uh, the magenta value plus one quarter of the magenta value, right? So when we have something like um, 40 here, 40% 40 on magenta, we have just, just over 50% on yellow. So that's kind of the balance of colors that we have um, in our skin here. Now, if we go to the lower area here, we can see that that's really not the case. You know, the numbers are a little bit different here. We've got, you know, 24 and 43. So um, they're not quite matching up. We can see magenta and yellow are very close together, whereas they should be separated. So we know obviously that there's a problem here. So we can very easily use selective color to actually fix that. So let's just zoom out a little bit. We're going to grab our selective color uh, adjustment layer. And what we're basically going to do is we can choose either yellows or reds. Skin tones are generally more kind of orange. So um, it kind of falls in between yellow and red. Uh, we can start with reds. And then if you find that, you know, the balance is maybe not quite right between shadow and highlight, what you can do is whatever settings we apply here, we can apply the same exact settings to yellow. So we're going to create a duplicate of our selective color adjustment, apply the same settings to yellow that we have in red and reduce both of them to 50% opacity. And then we're essentially, we're kind of bridging between red and yellow. But um, in this case, I think just targeting reds will work fine. So what we basically need to do is we need to nudge our values to get this lower area similar to the upper area. So one thing I'm gonna do is just um, create a gradient here. So let's just go ahead and mask this out. I'm just gonna grab my gradient tool, just a linear gradient and um, painting in white. I'm just gonna kind of create a little swath over here something like that. So it um, just targets our lower area because that's ultimately where we have our problem. So again, going back into here, we know that um, we need to, let's start off with uh, the top numbers, which is cyan. So we know that we need to get cyan down and magenta up because they're too close together. Uh, up here, we had double the amount for magenta as we have for cyan. So we need to get similar ratios over here. So let's go ahead and kind of start nudging this down. So let's go ahead and reduce our cyan and increase our magenta. Now, if we kind of look at things, we see that we're starting to get a lot closer. We have 19 on cyan and about 35 on magenta. So we're getting there. So let's just keep going. Let's just nudge it down to minus seven. Sometimes easier to type these things out than trying to use the Wacom tablet to, uh, to 
do this. So let's just go minus seven plus seven and let's see where we're at. So that's that's pretty close. We're at 19 and 37. So 19 times two is 38. So that's pretty darn close. Obviously now the color is still off because we're way too red now um, because we're still missing the shift in yellow. We, look and see, we can see how close we are between magenta and yellow right now. We've got 35% on magenta and around 39, 40% on yellow. And again, I'm just looking in this area over here. So those ratios aren't quite right yet. If we go up here, we can see that um, there's a much larger separation between magenta and yellow. So let's go ahead and start nudging yellow up. Let's just give it a lot more yellow and see how we're doing. So um, still not quite there. You know, if we go to an area where we have 40% uh, magenta for easy math, um, we should be at around 50 yellow because um, what we want is we want magenta plus one quarter of magenta. So one quarter of 40% being 10 uh, plus 40 should be about 50 in yellow. So we need to keep nudging yellow up. Let's just go way up on it and see how we, we do here. And there we are, we're getting there, you know, we're at 40 and 48. So let's just keep nudging it a bit more, maybe to around 45. And I think that's pretty good. And also our ratios um, in cyan and magenta look pretty close. We can probably take away a little bit more cyan, maybe go minus, let's just try minus eight and minus eight. Uh, minus eight and plus eight, sorry. All right, and there we are. I think that's looking pretty good anyways. Um, and then we go 1734, 1632, and then 38. So, you know, we could conceivably maybe play with the yellow value a little bit more, but I think personally before and after uh, that is looking pretty close. So one other test we can do to verify that we're actually uh, correct is let's go ahead and take this off. Let's create two new layers here. So we're gonna call this layer bottom so that we uh, know what's what, because this can get a little bit confusing top and then we're going to sample here so let's grab our brush tool and um, sample somewhere in and around this area over here and then we're just going to paint on our bottom layer so let's go ahead and uh, just draw something here like that then we grab our top layer and we're going to sample from uh, over here so let's just grab you know sort of a mid-tone value from the forehead and let's paint that there as well okay let's zoom in and then I'm going to just duplicate this um, selective color layer. You can always duplicate by holding down the option or alt key and dragging down. So that's going to create a copy. Let's just make sure that that's enabled. Otherwise it won't create the copy. It has to be enabled in order to create the copy, or you can hit command J to create the copy. So this is the exact same thing that we just created to offset those colors. Now what I want to do is obviously I want to get rid of this mask because it's not going to apply anything up here. So I'm just going to fill that with white and I'm going to clip it down to the bottom layer. So basically like this. So if we toggle this on and off, you can see that it's changing the color of the bottom one. Now, obviously there may be a little bit of a luminosity difference here, so we can just kind of grab our curves adjustment and knock this down so that it's equally dark. But you can see, you know, for the most part, those colors are now blending pretty well together, and which essentially means that they're pretty close. If we take this off, you can see the difference in the color between those two. Um, even though it kind of looks subtle here, uh, definitely noticeable and you can definitely see them blending well together. So that's always a little test that you can do at the end uh, to make sure that what you did is indeed correct. So if we uh, just zoom out here one more time and toggle this on and off, here's the before, here's the after, and you can just see those tones blending a lot better together. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, as you can see, you know, with some of the other approaches for matching colors, it's a lot more of an intuitive process. Here, uh, you can really kind of go off the numbers in a more mathematical way. Um, looking at the info panel and looking at the distribution of colors, we can try to match them up by um, essentially looking at the ratios between them. So please do check out my full photography and retouching course in the link below. Also, follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also subscribe to this YouTube channel to get future updates. Bye for now.